Hi everyone, it's Justin. This weekend I'm staying at a friend's place and in his living room there is this picture. It's a portrait of Elsa Peretti taken by Helmut Newton in 1975. It's one of my absolute all-time favorites. You might be wondering who the hell is Elsa Peretti and why is this picture so important? Here's why. Elsa was born in Italy in 1940 in a rich and conservative family. Her father was the founder and owner of a major oil company. One day she decided to move to Spain to become a model. At that time Spain was run by a dictator but for her that was liberty compared to the milieu and the social class she was coming from. Her family didn't take it well and stopped talking to her and sending her money so she was basically suddenly broke. She kept going and eventually moved to New York City in 1968 to pursue her modeling career. Her boyfriend at that time didn't want to let her go and hit her. According to the story, she arrived to New York City on a grey day with a black eye, big dreams and no money. She quickly became part of the fancy crowd, the dancing crowd of Studio 54, the little closed club that lived life to the max, literally, and made history. Bianca Jagger, Dion van Furstenberg or Andy Warhol were also regulars of that club, Studio 54, where all those people, the important creative people of that time, met and interacted with each other. Elsa Peretti's best friend at that time, for instance, was a certain Halston, a fashion designer that you probably know if you're in the US. His clothes made fashion history in 70s New York. He's become a bit forgotten now internationally, but I think it's a pity because he did great things. Elsa was known for her drug excesses and her strong taste for vodka. Most of her friends actually had similar lifestyles as well. And Elsa has said herself in an interview, I think it was to Vanity Fair, that her memories from her New York days are in fact blurred, not just by drugs and alcohol, but also because she thought glasses weren't cool and she refused to wear hers, although she needed them. <laughs> That's how cool she was. <laughs> in 1971, she even started to design jewelry for Halston. She worked with really organic, rounded, sensual shapes inspired by nature. And at that time, that was completely new and really visionary. She was so good at it that she eventually got signed by Tiffany in 1974. Yeah, the Tiffany of Breakfast at Tiffany. And she made that company huge. She designed unbelievable collections for that house year after year. And her contract was even renewed in 2012. That's how successful she is and how important she's become to that company. She's not living in New York anymore though. In the 70s, she started to buy ruins in a little village in the north of Barcelona in Spain. And she kept flying back and forth. She went there to kind of escape from the very extreme borderline and quite unhealthy life that she was living in New York City. So she always had that balance. And eventually when the 80s started and moving forward, she started to live there in that little village permanently. She bought little by little all the houses, all the ruins of that village. And now she's owning the whole thing. It's kind of her little stone village and she's living there and working from there. According to her, all her friends in New York City are now dead anyways. Some of cocaine overdose, which was the extreme lifestyle of all that Studio 54 kind of crew. Others died of AIDS, which hit really hard in the milieu that she was in when she was living in New York. So she kind of has nothing to regret on the other side of the pond and she's happy living in Spain. And that's probably also what saved her. I think she sees herself as a survivor of that era. Now that you know a bit more about Elsa Peretti's life, let's look at that portrait again. It was shot in 1975 on the roof of her Manhattan building by Helmut Newton, who is a major fashion photographer of the 20th century, in my opinion. He's been showing really strong self-confident women very early on, and that was quite a contrast compared to the image of the woman at that time in fashion magazines. Elsa is wearing a bunny costume designed by Halston, because why not? They were partying together the night before. She has just spent the night with Helmut Newton and they're having an affair. It's 11 a.m. They just got up and she's already smoking again. She is leaning onto the edge like she's living her life at that moment, on the edge. She has that I'm too cool to care attitude, but also true elegance in her posture and the way she's 
holding her head and that's coming from her well-born Italian roots which she really can't deny. At that point in the story she has no money but she has just started to work for Tiffany and that is going to make her a multi-millionaire. She already loves jewelry, she's wearing that diamond ring on the left hand on top of black velvet gloves next to tights that have holes in them like a big go to hell sign to her conservative origins and to the establishment in general. <laughs> so to sum it up, what we see here is a major designer to be, dressed in a costume by a major designer and photographed by a major photographer. Obviously this picture was going to go down in history as a major iconic picture from that decade because they were all the cool kids together to get that result. And I think that on that morning, while her picture was being taken on that rooftop in the middle of Manhattan, she was fully aware of it. This is why I like this photo so much and it's also why you always need to know a bit of context in order to understand a photography or other forms of art. I think it's true for all art forms, all formats and all media. In the coming seasons we are going to see powerful women, white shoulders, shoulder pads, masculinity within femininity, come back into the spotlight. One of my friends says that it's linked to the fact that so many countries in recent years have been electing male dominant leaders. And so maybe women feel the need right now to restate and retell the world that they are independent, that they are individuals of full worth, just like men are. And Maybe they feel the need to do that the same way that they did the first time around in the 70s and 80s through the lens of people like Helmut Newton. So the work of Helmut Newton, which is always associated with the 70s, 80s and with the past, is in fact going to be very, very relevant again, I think. And if you're interested in seeing more of his work, of his photographs, there are two excellent books with his pictures that I can highly recommend. I can't show them on YouTube right now um, because it includes nudity, so my video would be censored, but I will link those two books in the description below. Highly recommended, beautiful pictures. Thumbs up if you felt inspired by this video. I see you soon again. New videos every Wednesday and Sunday on this channel. Until next time, take great care. Bye.